This screen recording is a quick introduction to the HealthSites I.O. project. Our vision in HealthSites I.O. is to build a free curated canonical source of healthcare location data for the world. HealthSites was started by Mark Herringer and Tim Sutton and Drajen Odobesic. Um, and um, we built, the, built it as a web platform to integrate with OpenStreetMap data and other sources of data and try and collate all health site facility data from around the world into one single platform. We've had various institutional partners over the life of the project, including ICRC, HOT, uh, International Ho Hospital Federation, Ed Sanson Frontiers, um, Carta NG, Missing Maps, and obviously um, uh, Cartosa and uh, and um, other private individuals have also contributed to the code base. The strategy for how we're building out health sites is uh, iterative approach, where we first of all define a set of um, standards that we want to um, collect, standard data entities that we want to collect on the platform, and then uh, we started to build the platform, and then we. Um, and it started to build an open community around that platform and then iteratively improve, go and improve the standards, add things to the platform, extend the community, and so on. So the health sites data standards um, are described in the health sites wiki um, and they consist of mandatory fields and core fields. The mandatory fields are really very basic. Um, they, they cover the um, location, uh, the date of capture, um, and the name of the facility. And that's all. And we try to keep it really simple. And then the core, core attributes um, are um, covering more facility-related things, like the kind of facility and where it's uh, what its address is, contact phone number, and so on. Um, and uh, these are all optional, though we obviously want to try to populate as many of these things as we can. So Health Sites is an open platform. Um, if you go to the website, you'll see a landing page that looks like this. And um, uh, we have some descriptive information on the land landing page about the project and about um, our process. Um, and then we also have a dashboard. Or, um, where you can see some high-level statistics for, for the project, um, how many facilities have been captured and some of the latest changes. Um, and if you uh, type into the country name, uh, the name of a country, you'll get a drill down numbers for that specific country. So you can see I've, I've typed South Africa into the box and then we're seeing South Africa's uh, statistics for, for the data holdings for, for health sites in South Africa. Um, we also have a map view. In the map view you can you can browse and explore the data and if you click on a specific entity you can find out the details about that entity. You'll see that the data in the map is clustered so those circles with the, with the numbers inside indicate that there is for example 251 health sites represented by that cluster as you zoom in further into the map, then the clusters will um, break apart and eventually, if you zoom in close enough, you'll see individual facilities. Now you can see I've zoomed in uh, to my local town. You can see I've also clicked on the health uh, facility in my town. And then I can see details on, on the left um, de describing the core and mandatory attributes. The, the, if you're signed in user, you can edit these details and we have um, specific forms to um, streamline the data editing process and ensure that people um, capture things in the correct way. You can see here is a little um, screen recording of me doing that just that so you can see there is uh, for example the opening times we've got specific boxes that you need to fill in or if it's a scope of service we've got check boxes so we try to control um, the data capture process and make sure that things are captured in the right way. Okay, as well as having the platform, we also have an API, which is a way for programmers to interact with the platform. 
and um, this is described at the, in the Health Sites Wiki as well. At the moment it's fairly simple, you can do things like get all the facilities or get all facilities within a box geographical area uh, or search for facilities, um, get facility details and get synonyms for a facility. In the future we're also going to add capabilities to update and delete and um, uh, insert new facilities via the API. HealthSites.io also has a batch uploader. With a batch uploader, um, there's a simple form where you can um, upload a spreadsheet with uh, your, your health ministry data. Um, and the way that this is done is we create a mapping file. <coughs> so for each facility that wants to do this kind of uploads, we create a, a concept mapping file which lists the um, concept in health sites terminology and the concept in your spreadsheet and sort of um, allows us to import the correct column from the spreadsheet into the correct concept in the database of health sites. So what's on the roadmap for health sites IO? Um, we've got a, a, a vision for having a data life cycle where, which starts with people importing or, or manually editing data on the platform and then um, uh, publishing that data under an open license. We're using the ODB license which is compatible with OpenStreetMap um, and making that data available for um, for third parties on, um, in various formats like CSV, shapefile, KML and XML um, and then um, encouraging and, and providing a platform for users to validate health sites, go and improve the data that they encounter on health sites so that um, it's current and accurate and correct. Um, and we, would, we have a concept of a completeness indicator which shows like whether all of the core and mandatory fields are populated and um, we, will also, we also plan to include um, in the future indicators to show how fresh the data is, whether it's been recently updated or not, and some other quality rating um, attributes for the data. We, we want to build a core of specialist users who actually validate this data and, and build up the location data and, and um, move it from being partially complete to com complete. And um, once the data has been validated, um, we want to have it returned back into OpenStreetMap where it becomes part of the OpenStreetMap database and then have a sort of life cycle where we're continually synchronizing data out of OpenStreetMap into health sites, providing a specialized platform for editing this data and viewing it and extracting it, and then pushing the data back down into OpenStreetMap. Until eventually all the records should be complete and correct and accurate and up to date. So we've got um, various instruments within the project for, for achieving these visions. We've, we've partnered with various agencies. We've um, We've got developers who are sort of engaged in the outcomes of the project. Um, we would like to engage with the academic institutions and other um, private and, and NGO institutions, try to um, ga gain support for developing the platform and also, um, very importantly, getting a, a user base built around the platform who are engaged in maintaining and improving the data. So um, at the moment we have um, funding from Digital Hill Square to move us on the next step forward in our, in our roadmap, which is to uh, implement the OpenStreetMap complete lifecycle. So with the OpenStreetMap lifecycle, what we mean is that we want to have OpenStreetMap be the canonical source of the data, and we um, read and write data directly out of OpenStreetMap as edits are made, so that um, OpenStreetMap always contains the freshest copy of the information that we have um, edited on health sites. Um, and we're also within this funding um, cooperating with eHealth Africa to work on publishing data from health sites IO into, um, into CCAN, into the human, um, Humanitarian Data Exchange and into um, the um, health uh, uh, the health ex data exchange uh, which is now being called Gopher. So um, 
uh, and they're also working on some new improvements to support mapping in the field using mobile devices so they can capture health sites from the field and then have them pushed into the platform automatically. So this is kind of a diagrammatic representation of what I was just describing. So um, uh, you can see from the top that OpenHIE version 2 and HDX um, would be source uh, would be destinations for data from coming from health sites um, and on the left the health, health sites collection platform which is based on Android ODK um, implementation um, would be used to do field data gathering and these data would be pushed into the health sites API um, where the health sites publisher would push it down into OSM um, and we would on our side maintain um, a continuously updated um, mirror of what's in OSM and then uh, publish that with various statistics and provide the editing platform and so on. Um, and on the right, you can see that we've got two uh, kinds of users that we want to cater for on the platform. The first is, uh, um, you can say, community user who just wants to come along and edit to uh, update records that are local and that he's interested in. And the others are strategic partners, for example, health site ministry representatives, um, who actually would be the curators of the data sets for their country and we provide with them for them sort of batch upload facilities and also um, ability to identify when records are in conflict so for example if you're updating an existing record um, but it conflicts with something that's on the platform already if we can flag those records and, and let you know about it so our future plans um, are really once we once we've completed this digital square work um, focused on the curation and improvement of the data. So our idea is to have this um, concept of a validation index where each health site gets a scoring based on various criteria. Those criteria could be things like um, how complete the data um, attributes are, um, when last the data um, were reviewed, when uh, who, who actually submitted the data, and so on. And each of those things might contribute to the total score of the data so that we can kind of give a confidence um, uh, score for each record in the database. And then those that have low confidence scores, we can sequentially and systematically go and um, update and improve so that they, they are um, of equal confidence to the, to the rest of the database. And this will help us to build over time a very well um, maintained and curated data set. Um, so we've got a bunch of things that we need to do to take things to the next level. Um, we need contributors. I mean, we, we have been building this as a community. A lot of it has been done just um, um, as a community contribution from Cartosa and other developers. Uh, we need fund, funded in-country surveys. So along with actually building a platform, we need to people to go out in their countries and pay for data gathering uh, staff to go out and visit each hospital or, or clinic or whatever the facility is and record whatever information they can for that facility. We need secretariat support so that means that we would like to establish an office and have you know paid administrative people who are basically helping to keep the project running and, and things moving forward. Again that's been done largely on a volunteers basis until now. Um, we also need desktop mappers who are sitting you know, in the Secretariat um, reviewing data as it comes in, looking for um, records which are not of good quality and coming up with ways to improve the quality of those, those records. Um, and then of course the, the platform itself needs funding and the continual development of the platform needs funding and so we are looking for, for people to support us in our development work as well. So that's, um, that's the, the quick walkthrough, and I, I can also um, share a quick interactive demo here just to show you how the website looks when you're in, uh, using it. So when you arrive on the website, um, it looks like this. And uh, you'll see that if you scroll through, you get this dashboard that I was describing earlier. You can type in the name of any country that you like. Um, and it will zoom into that country and it will give you the breakdown of statistics for that country. Um, uh, and we will see that we've got this completeness um, 
uh, indicator here and our goal is to make these you know a very high percentage completeness for each country um, in, in general they are very low completeness at the moment um, we really need help to move that up um, and the most sort of uh, interesting thing to, to do on the site is to go over to the map where you can then interactively browse and pan through the data set so as you'll see as you zoom in these clusters sort of um, adjust themselves and uh, until eventually they become individual facilities. And when you've got down to facility level, you can go and click on it. You'll see the panel on the left here um, will update and show you all the details um, for a facility. If the details that uh, are missing, for example, scope of service or something, you can come in here and edit it and update the scope of service for that facility. Um, and um, we're hoping that if we can build a community of users to to um, edit these data records for us, that we can eventually move everything into a high completeness level. It's also possible to um, to download country data and um, um, so let's go back to the map and show you. So you can download the data for the whole. Um, database which is about um, 850 megabytes at the moment it's quite a large uh, 879 megabytes quite a large download um, we can cancel that um, and uh, we're also supporting country level extracts so you can go to your own country and um, and then extract the data for just, for just that country Right, and so that's a quick overview of healthsites.io. Thank you very much for watching.